Hi, this is August 12, 2012, and I'm your host, Mother Susan Raj, with my weekly economic report. So I begin now with the major news which you know took place in the Indian economy in last week. First, we will discuss the new finance minister, Mr. Uh, Chidambaram, who took and you know, who replaces now uh, Mr. Uh, Manmohan Singh, who was basically for a while finance minister uh, after Pranab Mukherjee became the president. So after uh, you know uh, taking his portfolio of finance ministry, Mr. Chidambaram said a couple of things which are very interesting. You know, what he said is that he wants to tackle you know moderate growth of last two years and he also wants to tame inflation so what is important for us to understand is how he's going to tame inflation and how he's going to you know uh, boost this you know moderating slowing down you know Indian economy and both the policies which he's you know actually prescribing for uh, increasing economic growth and taming, taming inflation on the other side they are antithetical they are basically contrary in terms, you know, they are not logical, they are absurd. So first thing, what he is saying is that he wants to tame inflation by tackling the supply side issues. So, you know, he thinks, and as I said, most of the mainstream economists, they think that inflation is rising the general price level and it is happening because there are a lot of supply side bottlenecks. The supply of real goods and services is not rising. Uh, and that is the reason why prices are going up. But they, again, this is a, uh, this is a mistake. Why? Because you know inflation is not rising the general price level. Inflation is basically creation of money and credit out of thin air. You know, and and as long as this whole definition of inflation is wrong, and and as long as they are not going to focus on the causes of inflation, and they're just going to focus on the effect of inflation. Inflation is never going to be tamed. And as I said, we don't want to tame inflation, we want to actually remove inflation. As last, you know, Chief Economic Advisor of uh, Finance Ministry, Professor Kausik Basu, he said that cancer uh, inflation is the biggest, you know, king of maladies. So I just can't understand that if inflation is the king of maladies, then why do you want to just control it? Why do you want to just tame it? You know, no, no patient will like to control cancer which is killing him you want to remove cancer from its root you want to just you know root it out from your body so they are not going they are not interested in removing inflation they are just interested in controlling taming it but that also they are not going to control it as long as they are defining it in the wrong way so first thing mr chidambaram is not going to reduce inflation by controlling the supply side or tackling the supply side constraint even if you are going to increase you know supply of real goods and services but if the money supply is rising quicker than that increasing the supply of goods and services then as I say the purchasing power the value of rupee is going to decline and from the money side it will look like as if the prices are rising so first thing inflation is not going to be tamed by tackling the supply side issue because it has nothing to do with the supply of real goods and services it has everything do with the increase in the supply of money and credit out of thin air. So as long as government and the Indian Central Bank RBI is not stopping their monetary printing presses, inflation is not going to come under control. It is not going to, you know, vanish. Another, you know, as I said, the another policy of, you know, um, uh, tackling the moderate, in, you know, economic growth, you know, you know, you know, giving some kind of boost to economic growth is also very much contrary. He said that he wants to reduce the market interest rate, and by doing that, he wants to boost the economic growth rate. But this is how they are going to reduce the market interest rate. They are going to reduce the market interest rate by increasing the supply of money and credit. You know, they are going to create more money more more credit out of thin air and and that's how they're going to reduce the supply reduce the you know uh, interest rate and that's that's inflation so that's not going to result into you know economic growth because economic growth has nothing to do with more money printing it has everything to do with you know increasing the supply of real goods and services which which people are ultimately going to consume 
as I said, people are not going to consume more mm, mm, paper notes. They are going to consume more apple, more oranges, more houses, more clothing, more shoes, more cars, more 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 computer, more more mobile phones, and things like that. So as long as the supply of goods and services is not rising, and as long as the monetary system is not sound, it's not backed by any kind of you know commodity money like gold or silver. Real economic growth is not going to take place. So Mr. Chidambaram. Now he's going to follow absurd policy and that is going to result into basically more inflation because as I said governments only know one thing to do and that is print more and more money. Alright, so uh, the second thing is you know last week uh, the uh, industrial production data came out, the IIP came out uh, negative 1.8% and the there is uh, as the news headlines are saying unexpected contraction in the industrial output Capital goods industry slumped by 27.9% in June. And uh, news headlines are saying that this is unexpected, but there is nothing unexpected into this contraction of industrial sector, mainly the capital goods industry. Because as I said, you know, if you understand the Austrian business cycle theory, then this kind of contraction was very much expected because whatever male investment has taken place in the prior artificial boom which was basically fueled by RBI's you know, a loose cheap monetary policy that has created a big bubble into the industrial sector mainly into the capital goods industry and when they are going to you know basically not they are not further reducing the market interest rate or they are you know they just kept in increasing it since last 20 months that bubble is popping right now the Indian economy was in bubble and that bubble is bursting now so obviously the industrial production is going to slow down you know because whatever male investment took place into that industry now that will be you know li liquidated and that that those factors of production those resources which are locked up into that industry have it capital goods industry they will try to you know go into the consumer goods industry but government is not allowing that transition also to take place so it's gonna happen there is nothing unexpected you know when you create booms artificial booms which cannot be sustained for a long period of time because they are not backed by any kind of pool of real savings this kind of you know slow down is going to take place into the manufacturing sector and I think Indian people should brace for more you know this kind of you know scenarios because the economy is going to really slow down if they are not going to you know allow this liquidation to take place then the other scenario is as I said possible hyperinflation or running of inflation for sure very high level of inflation because right now RBI has painted itself into the you know in, into the corner on one side if they don't reduce the interest rate then the economy is going to go through the painful recession but unnecessary one recession um, and if if they don't want this deflation to take place, which you know I guess they don't want it to be, then what is going to happen is they'll they'll reduce the interest rate and they're going to print more money. That's going to result into inflation. So there are only two scenarios right now possible for the Indian economy. On one side, a severe deflation, and on the other side, a possible hyperinflation, or running of inflation, very high level of inflation. The third alternative, as I said, you know, is to let not not to do anything, remove all the rigidities into the labor market, in either market, allowing the price system to work you know smoothly, allowing the profit and loss system to smooth work you know, you know work smoothly, that is going to bring the economy back very quickly into the normal course of you know uh, you know it's normal course, but I am sure government in RBI is not going to let that happen because whenever prices start to fall they think that is deflation and they, they really worry about deflation so I think the scenario is very much a hyperinflationary deflation so once the hyperinflation or very high level of inflation is there the monetary system will collapse there will be the, the crack up boom and then you will have a deflation in the end for sure so as I said it's gonna be a very rough ride these people are not going to let us you know, on our alone they are not going to leave us alone and they are going to create more and more mass for all of us so we all should press for more more hyperinflationary deflation kind of scenario okay then uh, SBI the State Bank of India announced uh, some results and their bad loans have doubled now you know from what was the expectation you know expectation was something like uh, guidance or something like 55 billion 
rupees of uh, bad loans the you know the one which they have given but you know they are very unlikely to you know get it back uh, against 55 billion it's now 108 billion rupees or so something like 100 1100 crore rupees of uh, bad loan SBI has accumulated now and and the share you know stumble SBI but what I really want to you know explain to you guys over here is that all this commercial banks are inherently bankrupt all the time 24 hours these banks are bankrupt why because they all function on the basis of fractional reserve standard where they don't have the depositors rupee in their reserves because they have lent you know or lend that rupee to somebody else you know because they are work working on a fractional reserve standard they don't work on a hundred percent reserve standard where they have to keep all the deposit of the depositors so believe me if if on a given day all the depositors of SBI for example or for that matter or for that matter any other bank they all go together to withdraw withdraw the deposit then these banks can never really give your money back to you because they don't have it in their walls they have lent it out to somebody else so as I said these banks are inherently bankrupt all the time the whole banking sector right now is working just on the basis of you know consumers confidence people think that these banks are you know solvent and they can repay them their money so that's why there are no bank runs but something goes wrong one real dent into the confidence of consumers and the moment they go there and ask about their money I'm sure all these banks will collapse like a house of cards because they don't have they, they are they are standing on a quick sand the, the fundamental base of the whole business is very poor actually all these banks are legally fraudulent because what they're doing is they're embezzling depositors you know private property their money they are they are just misappropriating all this money and giving it to somebody else so it's a legal fraud it, it's basically it, it's basically a commercial crime to, to do all this thing all of these bankers don't go to jail although many are right now going but you know because they're protected by the government and everything so as I said SBI is in big trouble and all the banks are in big trouble it's just a matter of confidence the day confidence will collapse all these banks will immediately go under too lastly uh, now we have as I said the former uh, chief economic advisor of finance ministry Kausik Basu he resigned he left his job and now we have a new top advisor economic advisor of government uh, uh, Professor Raghuram Rajan from Chicago University everybody is thinking that Raghuram Rajan is going to you know do some kind of miracle and he's going to basically uh, pull this economy out of this mess. Now the problem is all this, all these names, Raghuram Rajan or Kausik Basu or Manmohan Singh or Chidambaram or Pranam Mukherjee is that one guy cannot rule over 100 and you know 2 or 1.2 billion people because there are you know 1 to 2 billion people in India and one guy or two guy or three guy or four guys together cannot take the decision you know about all these people's life because all these people have their own subjective values and they act on the basis of those subjective values and this you know few handful of people this handle planners can never ever really fix the economy what they can do only is they can create more more of the mess the more the government plans the more individuals plans go astray and that is what is happening since since you know centuries and the whole notion that few people can rule over our life is is you know insane and like an absurd thought you know because they can never do that not only they don't have the knowledge but the fundamental problem which the central planners are facing which Ludwig von Mies is very brilliantly you know uh, basically you know pro you know uh, discussed something like hundred years ago uh, that these central planners they don't have the system of price and profit and loss to aid them in their in their work of allocating resources where those resources are needed so in the absence of price system and in the absence of profit and loss system these central planners will never come to know where the resources are needed so they are definitely 
not go you know they are not going to be able to you know economically calculate anything because they don't have the price system they don't have the facilities of you know for example accounting double double entry bookkeeping things like that you know which entrepreneurs use to allocate resources where they are needed so in the absence of price system profit and loss system raghuram rajan or kaushik basu or chidambaram they can never take proper decisions so central planning will always fail it has always failed in history and it will always fail in future also because it's a flawed system it's economically flawed system it's a technical problem it is not about uh, some brilliant guy becoming a top economic advisor and he's going to solve the problem it's never going to happen even if even if god comes even he will be not able to do it you know without the aid of price system so you have to understand this that this this whole game of putting some some guy from you know foreign universities and thinking that he's going to fix the situation that's not going to work ultimately if you really want to fix the economy then government will have to get out of the way they will have to stop intervening they will have to stop existing they will have to let the free market capitalist system work on its own and that is what is going to solve our problem i, I know that the the free free society is not going to be the perfect one there is nothing perfect in this world but what is going to happen is we will have much better solutions of all our problem much better solution and absolutely moral solutions you know government is immoral government is inefficient and as long as they are you know centrally planning everything as i said our plans are going to go haywire and we are going to get into more and tr- more trouble all right so this week i think uh, this much is enough you know there were many other things but these were the main focus issues on which i want to do you know just concentrate this week i'll be back with more news and more analysis with my economic report next week thank you very much for watching bye bye